<laughs> good evening. Uh, how's it going, everybody? Um, I hope you all had a good festive period this past weekend. A lot of people yeah. obviously celebrating Christmas and Boxing Day. Uh, I hope you had a, a good time with uh, your loved ones uh, close by, hopefully, for this past festive season. As far as loved ones are concerned, I roped in all of the ones that you've come to know on uh, Front Runner for this Monday as we wrap up the first half of the season and reflect on what's happened so far in the campaign. Of course, the footballers in uh, the DSTV Premiership played their last match uh, just recently before a bit of a lengthy break uh, whilst uh, the players kind of, you know, obviously get some time to rest. And for a lot of clubs also probably get an opportunity to get to grips with uh, the COVID situation, whatever that may be in their camps. Now the season will resume around two weeks into the new year. So uh, lots of downtime uh, in between then. Coaches will obviously look to maybe tighten a couple of things up, especially those who've come in without having the benefit of a preseason. They'll have a little time with their teams to kind of put things into place for the second half of the campaign. So we'll look back and possibly look ahead. Please welcome my panel this evening. I have joining me Brighton Mflongo, Kelvin Sosibo. We've got Obina Okafo and joining us yet again is uh, Coach Kevin Johnson in the house. Remember, you're always welcome to contribute via the chat section on the YouTube uh, live platform. And uh, of course, we'll also maybe give you an opportunity. I don't know. We've got a full house tonight. So yeah, just send your thoughts. We'll read them out as they come in. Let's get started Mamelodi Sundowns in their last two games a uh, draw and a loss but it must be put into context here's a team since the 4th of December have pretty much played a game every three days up until their last encounter and obviously in those last two games is their first loss of the season a famous scalp taken by Benny McCarthy and his Ama Zulu side so Brighton and Tlongo uh, your reflections on the Herculean effort of so many games in such a condensed period. I mean, we're hearing about complaints about the Christmas period um, from the English teams. I feel like Sundowns have had a Christmas period the whole month of December. Welcome. Oh, your mic is on mute, Brighton. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. There you um, go. Welcome. Thanks for having me, Gonza. Uh, thanks for having me, Gonza, and greetings to our viewers as well. Um, look, um, I've been saying that, yes, Sundowns are dominating. However, they haven't been at their, their best to be known at. Uh, even though they're still dominating, I still feel like now the cracks are starting to show, especially now that you've brought up the, the fact that they've been playing games, uh, the games have been coming thick and fast, you know, and it's starting to show. I mean, with, we, we saw Andy Lechali limping off and you can see, I mean, making reference to what, also, Thomas Tuchel said yesterday after the Chelsea game, he was complaining about how the players have having to struggle with the COVID and on top of that with the games coming thick and fast. So it is going to be a problem. It is going to be a struggle for all the, the leagues throughout the whole world. However, I feel like um, there should be measures that we, we put in place, especially now that we can see that the whole uh, the Premier League went away with the whole five subs. I think we should maintain that in protecting our players as well, you know. So, but as for me, for Sundowns, it was bound to happen for them to 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 lose a game or two here and there. But they still uh, within they still within uh, on course, you know. So yeah, they'll they'll they'll, they'll still be the Sundowns that's dominating. You know? We have the five subs rule um, in our league, and obviously that yeah. does help yeah. um, teams such as Sundowns. Do you think maybe Kelvin? Some teams have a, an advantage when it comes to that because a lot of coaches with smaller squads always decry the whole five subs thing. But it just strikes me as rather practical when you're looking at the length of a season and the amount of games that players have to play that you do have, you know, an opportunity to shuffle the pack, so to say. Yeah, it's, it's very beneficial to uh, other teams that's got a big squad. Uh, within that being said, I think also it gives other players to also get an opportunity and it doesn't actually um, distract the team too much. If, even though you can still keep the tempo up of the game, uh, you can still um, articulate within your game plan in terms of how you structure it because every player that is on the bench, now there are chances that you're going to be fielding five players and three before. And also uh, bearing in mind that uh, we had the, we, we're having this uh, COVID situation, 
So I think within the other legs that are starting to wear off in terms of other players in the league, it gives coaches enough time to actually to work around in terms of the scheme of things and, 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 and into how they want to play. Okay, Obina, as a coach, and uh, I'm going to extend this also to Coach Kevin Johnson, I mean, is it something you relish as someone who has a squad of players getting an opportunity to try out different players, or do coaches most times prefer to play with a settled amount of players, as a, you know, whether it be the starting 11 that sort of picks itself, or a, a larger group that's just, you know, those players and the subs that they trust to come in and do the job. But as a coach, do you look forward to the opportunity of using more subs uh, in a game? Does that help you get a better idea of what you're doing tactically, and also show you how far along your players are in being able to to slot in when they're required. Welcome. Uh, there we go. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Loud and clear, sir. Welcome. Yeah. Um, welcome. And to also, um, good evening to the viewers. Um, look, I think it's also... I think it's a very good uh, initiative when that five substitute uh, substitution started. Um, for me, I think it's a, a very good um, thing for both teams, uh, both the teams uh, that have a little squad and both the teams that have uh, a larger squad. Because one, if the team that have a smaller squad, it helps them in order to rotate players, you understand, due to fatigue. And also for the team that have a larger squad, it's also good for them to also rotate players in order to give players game time. But also remember for coaches, also for the coach, um, it's also the coach that uses this very well, that knows how to use it and depends because you don't want to change your team often and often and often and for the, the team not to have a rhythm. And also for the team that has a smaller squad also, you don't want to change, but as much as you don't want to change, you want to give some players much rest in order for them to come back fresh in other games. So I believe the five, it, it, uh, if it's something for me, I believe it's something that the FIFA should look at or uh, IFAB should look at for the, for, for the rules to stay, not for them to be scrapped out later to go back to three. That's a very good point you make there, that it should be a part of a long-term vision. Coach Kevin, I mean, you know, we always hear coaches bemoaning the fact that they can't play uh, all the players, that it's only 11 players that get to make it onto the pitch. I mean, we've seen crazy cases like the Almeria coach, Jose Gomez, who was swapping around his entire selection. But as a coach, is it something that you relish the opportunity to see just how well the other pieces outside of those that usually start are good at starting and coming into games and making a difference. Coach Kevin? Uh, Gamza, yeah, firstly, go ahead. firstly uh, can you hear me? Loud yeah, and clear, firstly, uh, Oh, boy. <laughs> I think we lost the coach there. Uh, we're going to try to get him back. Uh, yeah, no, this, this, this was the issue the last time, but let's see, uh, Fidel's going to work on getting the coach back. Oh, there he is. Coach, can you hear me now? Am I, am I back? Yes, you are. Go ahead. Coach, you're live. You can go ahead. I can hear you. Oh, uh, now your mic is on mute. <laughs> okay, firstly, welcome to all your viewers and we wish them uh, happy holidays. Uh, I, I just switched. No, it's on. It's not on mute. No, you're no, not. Off mute. We can hear you, and the and can the fans hear you. Yeah, loud and clear. Uh huh. Yeah. First. Oh boy! Oh boy! Oh boy! Okay, we're gonna figure that one out, uh, Fidel. I'll just ask you to mute the coach there as the man running things. Yep. Uh, we're gonna come back to you, Brighton. Um, obviously, you know, I was talking to the coach about how you can't always play the players you want. Uh, coach Rulani has come out and said, this is the exact reason that at Sundowns, we have a big squad. It's to be to able to take yeah. on these kinds of games. Who do you think out of the teams are going to struggle with that going into the new season in terms of being able to shuffle their pack going into games? Because What's happening, not guys? Really What's happening? Uh, there's the coach there coming through. Coach, your signal keeps on cutting out, so... Um, I think Fidel, you need to make an executive the signal decision. Signal keeps on, on cutting out. 
there we go. Yeah, you come in and out, but yes. Hello. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> hey, can you hear me now? It's, there. it's not. Because no? I can hear you loud and clear. Yeah. I can. I can see you. Uh, okay. I I can see you now, Gamza. Is it fine? Can I talk? Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, like I said, greetings to everybody. Let me not let me cut that short. Uh, Gamza, I think Obina makes a, a, a very good last uh, impression there, and I and I think it's it's important that that stays. But uh, for me, as a as a coach, uh, I think when it gets to that stage now, uh, most people, most coaches, in fact, want to have a sixteen man squad where they they rotate they rotate all the time. Mm. But uh, for me, and when you see fatigue and things like that coming into the game. Uh, for me, it's an excuse about mm. who's playing more and who's playing less. Mm. It's an excuse because uh, the administration part of that, as far as a coach is concerned, mm -hmm. it's, it's got a lot to do with who's the backroom staff now. Now your mm. medical team is m the most important coach mm. in the team. Mm. Your physical trainers are the most important coach in, in, in the team because right. they are there to make sure that you, you're able to play every third game. And for me, as a coach, I now press on there. I, I now press their buttons because I'm the leader. Mm. And uh, because, for example, a Andile Jali is so important for me, mm. he has to be at his best. And mm. I always look back and say, Lionel Messi is capable of playing 60 games a season. Mm. And so is uh, Cristiano Ronaldo. And so is Kevin De Bruyne. And so is uh, Ryan Sterling. So, when coaches talk about the fatigue in the teams and things mm. like that, then I think it's a little bit of an excuse. Hmm. It's a little bit okay. of an excuse. Okay, and, uh, that's interesting. Your, 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 your backroom staff now become mm. the most important. And that, that, has to be, that has to be really, really at its best. Yeah. And that means a lot of things have to take place because medically, Mm. We as coaches know when the beginning of the season starts, the medical team is always saying, Coach, you're pushing the players too hard, you're pushing them mm. this, you're pushing them that. Mm. When it gets to this time where they fatigue, now I have to make an excuse. No, there's no excuse. I'm going I'm to go to him and say, You know what? This player can't play 90 minutes anymore. It's your fault. Yeah, no, I hear you, Coach. You I hear you. I, I, because, I understand you loud and clear. And, and, but... Yeah. And those are the things that I look at as a coach. Yes. Uh, most of the teams that win win championships are very consistent mm -hmm. as far as who's on the pitch for mm -hmm. the 90 minutes. The five subs, I, 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 I accept it with my whole two hands mm. as, as, as a development for the future of so that the game, mm -hmm. I think five, star, five subs is only there so the mm. game can stay at a certain level. Sure. Uh, the running stays at a certain level. If sure. they made it more, like they would do in hockey, or they were doing in 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 hockey, yes, whether you have rolling subs, yeah, so yeah, they, yeah. They, as a, at an intensity that we'd like to see. There's no mm -hmm. downtime in the game. Everybody's okay. playing, 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 playing all the time. And if that happens, then the game will stay at a good intensity. For sure. But, uh, when people when players start getting fatigued and they're tired and they show uh, different uh, things, then I always say, "How come Lionel yeah. Messi is able to play sixty games? How okay. come Maradona?" Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 50 years ago was able to play 60 games in a season and not, not once sure. have a cramp. There's something wrong medically. It's got nothing huh. to do with fatigue. It's, it's something wrong medically. The fatigue, yeah. the, 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 the nutrition, the sleeping, that's not right. been taken care of in a positive way. So okay. for me, that's, that's my, my take on it. Yeah, no, for sure. I, I mean, Brighton, speaking to you as someone who's, you know, uh, still in the thicket thing, so to speak, do players need more time on the sidelines to rest? Do players need uh, a maybe better tuned uh, fixture list? Or is it a much ado about nothing, especially considering that right now we're about to go on to a break where, you know, obviously South African players uh, will be able to kind of yeah. recharge. Some of them obviously from South African teams are off to the AFCON and will be playing at a, an intense pace from the beginning of January but what do you make up of the of the calendar do players need more time to rest 
I think um, the coach makes a very valid point and so does Odin. Actually, all the guys within the panel, they're making a very valid point when it comes to squad rotation and so forth. However, I'd like to pin this on the coach in terms of um, the, the, the five subs. Yes, I'm well aware of the five subs. However, we need to understand that those subs, they are placed in terms of um, structures as to how you make those subs. You don't just make five subs uh, simultaneously or you can make one as, uh, in terms of like each player can come on one, 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 up to five. You know, there are placed in structures just to say you can make two subs and then uh, simultaneously and then you have to make the other two, three and so forth. That on its own, I mean, I stand to be corrected from you, coach. That on its own, it does put some disruption in, into the team cohesion, into the team um, rhythm that Obina is talking about. So as a coach, you always worry about saying, if I make this kind of sub, will it work towards uh, maintaining the, the team structure? Will it work towards maintaining the team cohesion? And then there on its own, it does put you off in a way that that's why you find coaches rather prolong making a sub than making a hasty decision into making that sub because they know that the rhythm of the team is very much important, you know, keeping that, that rhythm. And obviously, uh, besides the rhythm, the team has to, go, to have that uh, consistency going forward. So those are a tricky parts whereby coaches feel like, yes, we have an important player like Andy Lejali, whom when he limps off, you worry about who's going to now maintain because he's been playing throughout the games and he's part and parcel in the core of the team now. So to come back to your question, Kamza, as well, um, I know I, for instance, I've been one of the players where when they say rest, my rest means going to the mall, means doing a whole lot of things, you know? So we can say yes. The players need more time, but what do they do with that time? So there are coaches who believe that I'd rather have that player coming in even after the game, mm -hmm. even though mm -hmm. I know that he's not going to do anything, but as long as I'll, he'll be in my eyes where I'll mm -hmm. monitor mm -hmm. to a point that is he resting enough because it's, it's, it's no secret that um, South African players, African players, we lack when it comes to a bit of professionalism. We don't know when to rest. We don't know the moments, the key moments for a player the, rec mm. the recovery period as well. So those mm. are the things that we would say that we need to do more scientifically. I hear the coach was mentioning, was alluding on the fact that um, he's talking about um, medically, but I think scientifically we're still lacking far behind, whereby we implemented the player monitors, but we don't know how to interpret them. Who does need the rest? Who does need that momentum to keep on going forward? You know, So those are the things that we need to look at as to mm. whether the players need more time or they don't. So it, it boils down as to certain individuals as to, yeah. for me, Obina can be a player that after the game, each and every game, he goes back home to reflect. If mm. it's a loss, he can't sleep. He's going to go through his DVDs, checking where did it go wrong. Some players, they sleep after the game. I, for instance, I can't sleep after the game. I sleep in the early hours, looking at the games, watching where did I go wrong and so forth. So mm -hmm. we need to check in certain individuals as to how do we deal with um, our resting period scientifically and our diets as well. And then we can take it from there. Okay, okay. I mean, Calvin, speaking to diets, what, what was your diet when you were playing professionally? I mean, you know, much is made about nutrition and what players are told to eat and what not to eat. Was it that stringent? I mean, did you have a diet set out for you or was it just a case of, hey, I'm a footballer, fast metabolism, let's go and hit the McDonald's drive through <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. I think I had my own diet when I was a professional player. Uh, team don't go to those arms and length in terms of uh, issuing out diets to players, but there's some players that do take their careers seriously, which they will want to understand in terms of uh, how best can they be uh, an addition to a team or a value, and how can they enhance their performance in terms of uh, dropping or dropping uh, the, the meals that they take after the game or before the game. The only time that I remember is that most of the players sometimes will come to camps and this is the only time where they will eat properly. Other than that, nobody eats perfectly or eats a, 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 in accordance to the professional line. Everybody will eat everything that they want because they are on their own space. Only then, because that's not enough. You train from Monday, you want to play on a Saturday or on a Wednesday. So from Monday, you're having burgers, quarters, pop, and what? <laughs> and then you think, now you are thinking on the last day, which is now, it's going to be match day minus one. You're going to be playing tomorrow. Now uh. you start eating proper stuff where they're giving you pasta, chicken, and some vegetables, and then you start right. hydrating. 
these are some of the elements that are missing in terms of our professional level because I think uh, it's fortunate for players that have been in a development ranks because that mm. has been a standard for us to understand what we're supposed to do and what we're supposed to eat. Right. For a player that is new to the system, it takes time to understand because they will always feel that if they can run, they do yeah. understand that they think they are fit, but their food, that's going to uh, block your chest. That's not, a, that's not going to allow you to give the coach the 90 minute plus that they want. So it's, mm. it's, it's important for players to understand that. Once we start into that understanding, then we have a very good base for coaches in terms of uh, them relying on us in terms of the fitness that they put on us. And then we're having lesser blames in terms of the medical side because some of the errors that are caused are by us. Right. Right. Okay. No, fair enough. And, and uh, I mean, that's interesting. I, I you know, you obviously want to know that like the dietitians and people are working furiously at clubs to make sure that players are putting the right fuels in their body, but um, it would seem that the, that's a bit of a myth here locally. Uh, Obina to some transfer news. The, the, the word is that Bradley Rolani Amethyst apparently is his first name. Uh, I didn't know that uh, is going to be joining Mamelodi Sundowns. Where does he play? Do they need him? Uh, I mean, you know, the argument has been made that a lot of the so-called fringe players in the last couple of games have been getting a run just because of this heavy schedule. Um, is he someone, you know, I mean, obviously you can argue that he will bring value. We know what kind of player he is, but is it someone that they need right now? Or, you know, is he someone that could uh, probably do better for his career, not from a financial perspective, but maybe playing perspective at Cape Town City? What do you think is going through his mind ahead of the move to uh, Mamelodi Sundowns? Mike is on mute. <laughs> well, okay. Now, yeah, there you Can go. You go ahead. Yeah, sir. Um, I think Rolani is a very good signing for them if it does happen. Um, because the guy has been one solid midfielder in uh, Cape Town City. And he coming into sundowns is not a big move to say he's going overseas or to change culture or background or anything. And he's not a player that will not adapt. He's a player that have played overseas. Um, and I believe Sundowns for them, is it, he will be a very good adder because looking at their league, um, their competitions uh, they've been on and they will continue to be, you know, they're competing for the league. They're competing for the, um, the FA Cup. What, what is it called here? Uh, is, it the, is it still called the Telcom Cup or what? No, you Hello? mean the Net Bank Cup? The Net, Net Bank Bank Cup, yeah. yeah. So, and also in the Champions League. Uh, uh, yeah. So, look, um, Sundowns always need a big squad. And for him being, I think he's 33 going 34. He's not a young boy to say. He's, uh, I think he's just coming in. Um, they need a player that will just come in stabilized, you know, mentally right. strong. Um, look, I think they need him. I just believe they need him, and he's been. Uh, look, uh, I think he's somebody that can cover up for Zwane, you know, and he's somebody that can also cover up for Jali. So he's more of a central midfielder for me. Uh, but his play, look, uh, I think he he will be a very good uh, signing for for Sundowns uh, going forward. I believe so. Okay, and Coach Kevin, I mean, is this more in line with what you think is the aspirations for a strong campaign in uh, the Champions League? Obviously, for Sundowns, that is a big part of their thinking when they sign players. Is he maybe one piece of the puzzle they can add in Jan that'll help them get closer to that target? Look, Gamda, uh, before I answer you on Rilani, uh, I want to go back to... Be- uh, to, 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 to... Uh, Brighton, just to sort of put my twenty cents there. Uh-huh. I think with today's, uh, you know, my last my last time in in was at Amazulu, and uh, all the coaches have iPhones. I mean, all the players have iPhones, and there's so many apps that uh, you 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 can or that they sleep on, they rest in. Uh, Brighton said they go to the they go to the mall. We know those things, but it's coaches that we must know, and we got to use the apps. And we use those apps. We made sure we track the players all the time. So whether they had two phones, 
We didn't care. We did, we just only wanted the, the one that would tell us where you were uh-huh. when it was sleeping time. Okay. You know, you've got an iPhone. You've got an iWatch <laughs> as well that tells you when you're going to have a heart attack. It's all modern things. And uh, back to, to Kelvin's uh, point about eating. You know, we must stop adapting European and adapt to the African mentality. Pop and burros and steak, it's good food. It made us be the best continent in the world. And your scientific people go around that, we can eat pup every day. It doesn't, it's not going to kill us. It's how we do it and when we do it. And mm. morojo, it's, mm. it's, it's food. A sustenance, and yeah. So all those things needs to be, it needs, it, you, need to, you need to look at that. And that's what I look at. And that's how I kept my players. I kept my players at Platinum Stars. I kept them at, at, at Sundowns. I kept them at, at, at Amazon. You've got to talk about that. You don't talk about vegetables. and Because our players don't come from vegetables and things like that. But anyway, that's for another long story we can talk about. <laughs> the thing as far as the Rilani is concerned, probably one of, the, one, of, one of the best signings that Sundowns have done, I think. Very, very, very good player. The fact that uh, South Africans are only seeing Rilani now is actually a shame. Mm. Because when he was overseas, he was fantastic. He was fantastic. That's why he stayed so long overseas. But the mm. fact that we only seen the last bit of Rilani's potential mm. uh, is, 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 is really, really, I think it's, it's, it's not good for us. Because for sure. we don't know. But for, sure. uh, for Sundowns, I think they, they, they only getting ready to get rid of of, of, of Serena because Relani can play all three of the positions. He can cover Zwani. This, if you look at Zwani at the moment, he's one of the, one of the only players that, uh, that I can say is looking after himself holistically. And that's why mm. he can play week in and week out, week in and week out. You understand? Mm. So, mm. But the other three positions that some normally play with, uh, with, 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 uh, inverted wing, wing wingers, inverted fullbacks. Rilani covers all three of those positions. So I think they're bringing him either to cover, but I think they're bringing him more in to give more assist to Peter Shaulile. Okay, you need there another we go. Peter Shaulile. If I was, if I was, <laughs> if I was, if I was, if I was Sundowns, I'd buy another Peter Shaulile. Where do you get one of those, coach? Then they've got everything wrapped. Where, where, where do you find another oh, Peter Shaulile? <laughs> That's the question, because I think uh, Chiefs and Pirates will bite your uh, hand think, over them. I think uh, it, with, to give them another shot, Peter Shaudile? No, yeah. he's, he's, he's somewhere in Soweto, or he's somewhere in <laughs> Durban, or he's somewhere in Cape Town. We just or somewhere in Vintook. <laughs> okay, I guess fair enough. Right, we're going <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> to keep it moving and move on to the team that are currently second, uh, sitting in second. Uh, and that's none other than uh, Orlando Pirates, uh, who I guess, you know, in terms of just finding some stability and good play, uh, Coach Mandangazi has been a bit, you know, hesitant to say that, you know, they've been in games and just not been able to finish them off. But this time around, it seems like coming to the halfway point of the season uh they were able to to, to find some form calvin Sosibo, how would you characterize um the, the the last couple of games that we've seen from orlando pirates as they sit now second having finished second last season uh going into the break well i think it's a well-motivated orlando pirates that we saw in the last two uh, last games that they've played uh, i think one of the biggest highlights is their striker who has been so who has been in into so much pressure for not scoring. But for him to have finally have uh, broken the duck and find the net, I think it's confidence for the technical team also for uh, and also on the scouting side, the people that brought him into the country. So for me, I think Orlando Pirate is actually now being in a position where they are competing and more sharpness and more confidence that it, it's added into the, the players. And also coaches uh, driving the team into the direction that they want, even though they are um, they are actually in the bad side where they have a lot of injuries on, on, their, on their bench. But I think the team is coming up together. It's gelling, and which is one of the positives because when one of the players that is I, I would have to highlight is um, Nda, who is being picked for the national team. I think for him, uh, I think it won't be coming back to Orlando Pirates 
in, in the level of uh, playing style that they've been playing because it's going to be exposed to this massive competition that is going to be played in Africa. So Pirates must look for another replacement, even though they thought that they would have find a replacement for the center back. But I think they need to go and shop again for another player because chances are that player has been solid, has played 13 games, has never set the foot wrong. I think he has adapted well. He has adjusted to the tempo, climate, everything that you can name when you're coming from a foreign country, coming to our shores. Uh, with, with, within the, the scheme of things, uh, Pirates are looking, uh, are looking sharp now. They are ticking the right boxes in terms of like uh, gaining entrance on uh, final third entries uh, defensively. The only, uh, the only place where I feel that they still need to improve a little bit more the creativity in the middle and also play, finding one player that will be able to break down the attacks and uh, who will actually make sure that he initiates and start the attack from their side. Obina, to that point about Ndaba um, that we've seen at Orlando Pirates and him now turning out for the Super Eagles, provided obviously he gets enough game time at the tournament, um, do you think there is a risk that he might attract suitors with a bigger prospects as far as the football is concerned? Um, or do you think he's someone who has come to South Africa to join Pirates, to develop himself and maybe just take the time to, to learn from coaches in Ngazi and uh, David's at Orlando Pirates? Well, if he's given a chance uh, at the tournament, uh, which uh, I'm just looking at the possibility and uh, uh, the chances of him being given a game time there will be very slim. Mm. But again, if he is given, I know being a Nigerian, already there's been, um, there has been network going on around that he's coming and his managers will be on and off, you know, trying to get suitors to come and watch him and the rest. You know, um, the boy has been solid ever since, like I said before, when I came back. Um, when he played against uh, Kanupilas when I was back home uh, L, uh, late this year, I think it was about June or July. Uh, it was uh, uh, our sixth game before the game ended. I saw him, I went to him, I collected his number. He was one solid boy, the very sweet to watch as a centre back. You know, he reminds me of the old John Mabizela when I was with uh, Orlando Pirate uh, when I came there. Um, look, the boy was he was fantastic uh, during his time in, in Nigeria. And I, I, I was shocked for him to come to South Africa. I thought he would just be in Europe. But then um, South Africa has been a very solid ground also for him. You know, um, he's been playing, adapting very well, showing people what he's capable of. You know, I remember before he even started playing, Fadlu called me. Um, hey, did you hear about our new signing? I said, yes, I heard so much. Look, you, you will enjoy. He said, no, he's been perfect uh, during their campaign in the Confederation Cup or is it the Champions League? So, um, look, uh, for me, if he's given an opportunity in only just, I don't believe only him being in the list alone, you know, um, will attract suitors. I believe so, because there will mm. be agents that are looking for low profile in the Nations Cup, low profile players, you know, for them to cut down costs and everything. But again, will Pirate let him go? It will come back to the issue of uh, Okonko when Okonko was here. Pirates are not a team that let go of players easily when they need that player. Mm. Because uh, uh, I remember the issue of Okonko and yeah. Ivan when he was fighting and they really needed him. They didn't want to let him go. And I believe that would be the issue of Nda. Uh, look, there are two signings, the Nda and, Pe um, and, and Pe 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 Pepe or whatever. Pepra. Pepra. As, Pepra has been solid, you know, and, and thanks to their scouting team and to the coaches that also saw the talent. Because look, you can scout whatever, but if a coach don't have the eye to see what he has, he will still let them go. But mm. look, uh, credit goes to the scouts and also credit goes to the coaching team. That And also there's one thing I saw in, in, in Pirate this season with Pepe that uh, uh, like, like, uh, just gave me joy. Pirate has been a team that the coaches always fall, uh, fall down to the fans when the fans start calling out like uh, when the strikers are not scoring. Mm. 
Pirates, since last season, I know, has been playing well, but now they've lacked that pointer, that goal-scoring uh, striker, you know, like uh, Coach said, the, the Shalolilis. You know, you need that kind of a player that, that, that anticipates every ball in the box. Mm. And for them, this boy has not been scoring and they've been, you know, giving him that opportunity, you know, be, for them to give him that opportunity for him to continue is the confidence they mm. post. It, it shows they, they have that confidence. There is something they've seen in training that we, the, the fans, haven't seen. You know, so I think I'll just give them that uh, acknowledgement to say, you know, it's been a good thing for them to believe in him, give him that chance, and now he's paying them back. Mm. You know, so I believe uh, Nda also has also like doing well. And I believe going to the Nations Cup, like uh, Kelvin uh, said, um, Pirates should start looking for replacement <laughs> if they will let him go. That's a big if. That's the big if. Um, yeah. I mean, Coach Kevin, listening to that and and then looking into obviously how well scouted these two acquisitions have been by Orlando Pirates in uh, Pepra and in Nda, just... How crucial is that to have people who know what they're doing when they're looking for personnel to bring in? And, you know, uh, uh, how many players do you maybe look back on and think, damn it, should have maybe kept that guy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I hear Urbina and I hear Calvin and uh, they say a lot. But uh, just if you're starting with the strike head pirates, uh, Gamza, then you can, you can see it's taken in just on plus minus five months to 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 really show what it's worth, and if I if if I'm wrong, then tell me please. I think he's from the Congo. Uh, the pirate striker. He's from Congo, right? No, no, Ghana. I'm on mute. He's Ghanaian. He's Ghanaian. He's Ghanaian. Yeah. Ghanaian. And mm-hmm. the same. And oh. is from Nigeria. Yes, sir. I think we as South Africans have to go back first and do what Obina said understand the, uh, the, 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 the Ghanaians and understand the Nigerians. Don't accept. You know, I, I've been reading a book that uh, uh, there's, a, there's, there's, there's a kid from, from Zimbabwe that she's written, uh, she's got an online language thing called Vambo where you can learn to speak. You see Sulu, Itkosa, uh, Shangan, Shona, you can learn. Right. And this is where you can learn to understand the people that come from there. From my experience, Nigerians, I know Nigerians are only coming, coming here to pass by as, as, as footballers. Through a, a, a thorough way to go from South Africa to Europe, yeah. I found out when working, they, they know that I could have made it, but I am here to do something else. They make a good job. And that's the, we have to understand the personality because when I was studying with, I think it was one or two Nigerians in Brazil, they said, you know what? When we are born, our parents tell us, the world is an oyster. Go wherever you want. Hmm. And in the world, I've always found a Nigerian. So <laughs> it's, not, it's not something that they want to stay. They want to move along. Yeah, and so sure. do the Ghanaians. They also want to move along, the West Africans. They always right. want to move along. Right. They want to find different, different uh, uh, you know, you understand. And we as a South Africa that has come from a, an apartheid, we have not got that feel of what the world is like yet. We have not felt what the world is like to live in Zimbabwe for nine years, for 10 years, and then come back home. No, we haven't got that feel. There's still too many of us that haven't started there. So, yeah, I think uh, Pirates, for one, uh, mm-hmm. have found the form. Fadlu and Anda Mandla, they, 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 do, they still blow hot and cold as, as, as they've been done in the last three or four seasons. But uh, it looks like they can, get, they can get better. They can get better. Because I believe okay. in Mandla and, and Fadlu. And uh, mm-hmm. yes, Obina said it on, hit it on the head. To play for Pirates and then to go somewhere else, only been with pirates. Not many play that. Not many. Okay. Now here you go from a foreign place. Play for yeah. pirates for five months, and yeah. then decide to go. You got to get a lot of money for them. 
No, for sure. No, for sure. Well, I mean, he's definitely increased his value. Uh, Brighton, just very quickly on um, this point, obviously, with Nda going to uh, AFCON, it means that, you know, there'll be a space in the back line, I guess, for the likes of Tyson Shatswaya, who at the weekend came back into the fall for 23 <clears throat> minutes, having not played in, in nine games for Orlando Pirates. Uh, besides having his notifications on and having subscribed to Front Runner and hearing what we said about him last week, what do you think has changed? Well, look, um, I believe that um, it, it, it takes us back to the question of uh, Bradley Ralani being a good signing for, for, for Sunder. And I believe, I think uh, Coach would attest to that as well, I, I believe that squad additions and refreshing the personnel with key figures in the team add, adds value within the structures, you know, and it adds a bit of good competition and mm-hmm. it eliminates an, an element of, of complacency, people thinking their own positions and so forth. And obviously it brings out the best out of certain players as well. It has key components and key elements that will help the team as opposed to uh, attract the negative side of things. So I believe that Olisander, his addition to Afcon uh, and him giving a good showing at Orlando Pirates did raise some eyebrows as well. But uh, on the positive side of things, it did motivate and encourage certain players now to rise up and put more extra effort if they were not doing it, you know. And having to see Tyson coming back and he gave he gave a good performance with the little time given. He he looked he looked more confident, he looked more solid, and he looked uh, he looked more eager and very ambitious to 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 hold on to that position as well. And as for Olisa, obviously he's going to the Afcon, provided that he gets a chance. I mean, he he'll be he's he's competing against uh, vastly experienced uh, 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 Ekong, who plays for Watford, and then he competes with Balogun, who plays for Rangers. And you look at those guys; they've formed a solidable pair uh, throughout um, the Nigerian national team throughout all these past years. So mm. it's gonna be hard for him is to go out there, grasp the experience learn as much as he can and whatever opportunity that he gets obviously seize, seize the opportunity and uh, go forward and come back well equipped as well because he's still going to be tried and tested when it comes back to Pirates it's still his first season he has played under what under 15 games so it means he's still going to be tested so mm. it's a good test for him but at the same time it also prepares the other guys that are remaining behind like your Tysons will be your happy jealous too do understand and to acknowledge that this guy is here, he's doing well. While we support him to do well, furthermore, mm. what are we doing on our end? So for, for sure. me, I was happy to see Tyson coming back and doing well. He did fairly good. Mm. Um, and I believe that this is now the time whereby he's going to raise his hand and mm. not rest on his laurels to say, okay, competition is stiff. Because that's the main purpose for every team when we mm. make acquisitions, when we make key signings, my key signings, the main purpose is to obviously refresh the squad and mm. to always keep the competition levels high. You know, so I think for me, it's going to work perfectly fine for them. And to add on what the coach was saying and what actually Obino was saying as to our strikers, Pirates having, I think Pirates had a striker in Tsukofa Tumabasa who can always, whenever his strike ratio has been good last season, obviously apart from um, injuries and so forth. I believe that it's just a matter of giving players confidence because now mm. we are alluding to the fact that the Pirates team gave uh, Pepra the confidence, the coaches gave him the confidence, the belief mm. in him. What about the other players? I believe that if we continue doing the same with the other players, we can reap the same rewards because with Tsefofa Tumabaso, each and every game that he played, he came up He came up with a couple of chances or a goal mm. or brace mm. or so forth, you know. So, mm. to me, it says that he does have the qualities. He does have the qualities in him. But do we have the belief in him to make him one of the best strikers the same way that we are putting your Vitali Dualos, the same way as we are putting the Shalulis in the same caliber? So, the coach is right. There are those players out there. It's just mm. a matter of which coach has the belief in them. I, for instance, when I got to Paris, no one gave me the chance. No one gave me the belief. But Coach Kevin himself, as an opposition coach, he used to give me the motivation. He used to give me the belief, you know? So mm. it, it's, it's a matter of someone giving you the confidence and the belief to say, you can go out there and make something out of yourself, of which that's what we lack in South Africa. That's why most our counterparts, our mm. Nigerians, our Canaans, that's what they strive in. When they get to a place, they have the belief and 
they have the backing, the support mm. to say they'll succeed. The same way as Obina mm. is saying about Olisa, tipping him for success. We don't have that. We need to have the same belief with our same players as well, without putting anything away from, obviously, our counterparts who come to, to, to our shores and bless us with their talents as well. Okay. And I mean, on that point, uh, Obina, in terms of trust and support, um, are the coaches at Orlando Pirates the ones to be entrusted and supported with uh, seeing through the season? Um, have you seen improvements from now having uh, Mandla join Fadlu? Uh, what do you make of that? And I mean, is it a sign of the times and a trend for the future where we'll see more tactically astute coaches kind of working together to help a team uh, reach their targets? Um, look, first of all, have I seen improvement from from last? Then we have to look at what uh, um, uh, what uh, what side, what angle are we talking about here? Is it the result, or is it the sport, or is it the structure, or whatsoever? I don't know. But okay, fine. Let's take it one at a time. Um, if it's about the result, I believe uh, they they haven't done more than what they've done last season. You know, I think they're still on track um, at the moment and they haven't fall behind. Uh, they're still on course in terms of result. Then structure, um, looking at the, uh, I'll just say at the team structure, looking at the two players they've brought in, the likes of Mda and Pepral, you know, then I believe, yes, uh, they, they, they're going ahead with, uh, with the two you know, they've done a really a good job on that side. Um, but yeah, if we look at the whole results of the team and the whole playing style, I think like what uh, Coach Calvin said, um, I think they've been blowing hot and cold, you know, in, in terms of the tactical approach in each and every game. And for them also to stabilize their own style of play and force it onto every team they play, um, the way Sundance have done. You know, so I believe also they have to also create um, a winning mentality inside the players. You know, that is something that I've, I'm seeing lacking somehow. You know, they ha- the, the players must learn how to, to, to incise uh, winning just to force it anyhow. Um, as much as the play, they have to also force it because uh, winning is about forcing. You you know you competing against eleven players also, uh, also a team that have been coached. You know, so for me is for for the coach to also uh, impose their 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 impose a winning mentality on the players. You know, so uh, generally, I, I just believe. Um, it's about 50-50 chance uh, from last season and here I haven't seen anything um, that is different but then when we look at one or two in terms of the players they've brought in of, or the winning ratio or anything I just believe they're on, par, they're, they're on course you know maybe to surpass uh, last season result. Okay and then uh, is Nigazi and Davids an upgrade on Zimbabwe and Davids? <laughs> um, look, uh, there is something for me I don't understand about co-coaching, you know. But yes, um, with Sundance one, it, they came out openly to say, uh, uh, um, uh, what was his name? Um, the one that assisted, the coach that, uh, uh, that assisted Piso. Mangoba. Oh, Mangoba. Mangoba, Mangoba, they came out openly to say Mangoba, um, he, his decision is final. He's the one heading the, 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 the yes, there are three co-coaches, but uh, Mangoba is, 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 is the head. But in terms of Mandla and Fadlu, is something I don't understand. Fadlu has been there before Mandla came. Is Fadlu the, the head? He does his um, um, decision um, over 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 uh, supersedes uh, Mandla's yeah. one. Yeah. Um, the, you know, these are things that as co-coaches, because I believe, uh, like the way I am, I've I've been a head coach. I've been an assistant. When I'm an assistant. My job is just to assist the head coach. Whatever right. I have as, as, as a head coach, I, I keep it aside to support whatever the, the head coach brings out. You know, this is what I have to make it. I have to make work. Yes, as much as I, I can argue with him, I can try to put um, 
things in that. If he says, okay, let's go this way, then I have to go that way. You know, mm -hmm. and that way I have to make him see the disadvantage and the advantage. If he still stands, then I have to find a way to make it work. So here is two co-coaches that they have to argue. Look, every coach have a style. As much as our name are different, our style, our vision and everything, football, uh, it, it, we different the way we see football. We can go at the same coaching courses. We can go everywhere. We can do everything the same in football. But the style and our vision and our understanding will be different. But then sure. putting co-coaches, you need to make one person his decision to supersede the order. So this is what I don't understand where Pirate is at the mm. moment. Okay. I mean, Brighton as a player, uh, from a, your perspective, whose tactics are winning the yeah. games? Is it Padlu or Man? <laughs> Uh, I stand to be corrected on this one. If I can answer that question, Gamza, I think what I'm about to say probably might give you my answer. Uh -huh. Whether it's diplomatic or, <laughs> or problematic, <laughs> I, I don't know, guys. I, I hope but it's the second one. Me, it's better for ratings. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, honestly speaking, my, my honest uh, point of observation is that Pirates are on a slight decline since Mitchell left. Reason being, I believe that um, at that period, Mitchell came in when we were not doing well. And when Mitchell came in, he kind of instilled the belief. Because of being Mitchell, who was someone who had been there before, he already knew the culture of the team. I think that's the main important thing. The culture and the identity of the team, we kind of lost it in a way. In a sense that um, when Mitchell, that season, when he came back, it was a tug of war between Pirates and Sundowns. At some point, Pirates looked as if they were going to run away with it up until they lost it at the end. And then you could see the identity of the team was still there, the culture of the team, obviously, and the signings were in accordance to the philosophy of the team as to say, okay, this is where we're going to beef up and that's it. So now when you have a team um, that finishes on a high, yes, it's a bit of a disappointment. But what do we do then? Do we say it's the players? Do we reinforce or do we go back? I love what Coach Peter once said when he lost the, the trophy to, to, to Coach Baxter, when he said, I know where I lost it and I'm going to come back and get it. And what he did was he tweaked here and there, his playing personnel adjustments here and there. But now the difference with Pirates, what happened was changed the entire thing again the next season and the season after that. And so forth till today. It's more about more signings, but we don't see if their, their adaptation is good. Uh, it's and on top of the different philosophies at the same time, you know? And until so, now, though, when you, when you see a yeah. bit of consistency within Da and Pepra, exactly. but you, you want to see more exactly. than that. Okay. Exactly. So there's no continuity. For me, that's what I'm saying. They were on a decline after Mitchell, because from Mitchell's first season upon his mm -hmm. return, I yeah. believe there should have been a bit of consistency and continuity to say, okay, guys, we finished second. Where did mm. we lose it? Where are we mm. going from here? Mm. Mm. Adjust where we can, tweak here and there. You can't fix a machine if it's not broken. And yeah. you can't fix the whole motor if it's only the tires that were mm. broken. So mm. for me, I feel like from that puncher that they got towards the end of the season to lose the title, that's what we should have done. We should have went back to say, okay, let's get new tires. Let's inflate mm. that specific tire as opposed to changing the whole motor. Because we're talking about consistency. So for them to be a, a, a form to be reckoned with, a formidable side, they should have continued from where they were. Because right now yeah. we're busy talking Zimbabwe, we're talking Coach Rulano, we're talking Patrick David. Within a short space of time, and all these players, they need to adapt to the philosophy, different philosophies and so forth. That's why now we're kind of starting to see it now, which is late. When they come back, we don't know the changes. We don't know signings that they're going to make again. Those players, mm -hmm. we need to look at the uh, psych uh, psychological aspect of things and the philosophy. When are they going to adapt and so forth? You know, So for me, that's when I feel like they were slightly on a decline. And we, we had to see because Pirates are supposed to be up there. We're talking about mm -hmm. a big team. not mm -hmm. Because these days, it's more of like your Manchester United where you the, you're no longer a big team, you're an old team that's existing. So we want to see a big team that's going to be in the thick of things every time and again.
No, I hear you. I hear you. Uh, and uh, we're just going to go to YouTube real quick. We'll get some analysis in the midst of the spirit of festivities and new beginnings. We will grant Tyson an opportunity again to make up for his blunders. He must bear in mind, though, that one mistake and he's out. OK, uh, <laughs> coach, uh, I just want to ask you very quickly now as we move on to another team that's seen also a bit of, you know, dizzying changes as far as the coaches. Ernst Middendorp came in then was followed by Gavin Hunt. Now you have Stuart Baxter, who's been able to bring in the likes of Keegan Dolly. Um, you know, looked kind of precarious for Kaiser Chiefs. They've seemed to find their footing. Uh, I don't know. Some might argue that this whole COVID episode in their camp has somewhat galvanized them. Uh, and they're finding a bit of form and maybe one of the teams that wouldn't want this break because of the fluidity and, and the way they're playing. For other reasons, they would want it because of COVID. But what do you make of uh, Kaiser Chiefs' uh, season so far, Coach? Is it me, Gamza? Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, again, uh, Brighton should become a, a technical speaker. I think he, he, he summed up uh, Orlando Pirates very, very well. And Kaiser Chiefs are probably in the same in the same uh, breath, Gamza. Uh, the fact is that they, they, they're a big team, but when there were a good body carrying the culture forward, of Kaiser Chiefs is like, and when you play for Kaiser Chiefs, what it is like to put on that jersey with, the, with, the, with, 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 with that particular emblem on. So the culture of the team is, is a little bit uh, offside for me. And that is what is happening. And the younger players that are at Chiefs, they all have very, very good potential. They have great potential. Uh, but they just, they, just not see, they just don't seem to be using their, their, their potential to the right level. And at times, they're not working hard enough on the pitch. It doesn't look like that. So for me, they also, in this uh, they're on the same highway as the London Pirates. Mm -hmm. We need to use two teams specifically. When you put on that jersey, you got to know where you come from, who you come from. And I said this in our last, in our last conversation, uh, uh, Gamza, I don't think the Orlando Pirates remember the players that won the treble for Orlando Pirates. They don't know that. And they are not at Orlando Pirates For themselves and that is what the next culture has to the next generation of players have to always think about is mm -hmm. when i'm at chiefs i want to win this league twice mm -hmm. because Stuart baxter in 2007 for crazy chiefs it is too long mm -hmm. it is too long for a chief a, a team of chiefs caliber to have won the league in i think it's no not 2007 2013 it is too far away for them to have won that league so you have to have every season, you have to have the culture that the current crop of generation of players you have, have to win more trophies than the last league. For and sure. they have to be consistent in a certain way. It's not about a coach coming in and saying, I want to play my style of football. No, this is our style of football. You adapt to us because you, we, mm. we pay you this amount of money Therefore, mm. you must get the best out of the players for this because we're all employees at the team. Mm. You don't own the team as, mm. as, as, as a coach. You are just an employer. So you've got to work within the confines of, 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 of what they give you. And you've got to make sure that your athletes you put out on the pitch mm. are the best and they're able to keep the structure and they're able to play better okay. and get the okay. better out of the players. And I like what Brighton says, even though I never coached him, I always pushed him. Whenever mm. I saw him, mm. I said, I, no, I hear you, coach. No, I hear you, coach. I hear you. Kelvin, um, I mean, uh, to that I, point. Can yeah. I just can I, yeah, uh, yeah. can I put something up to coach, uh, to coach there? Um, coach, you've been in the system, and, and this is something I've argued uh, most of the time. Um, how many clubs, apart from Ajax, um, in this in, in, in South Africa, even when I was playing, apart from Ajax Cape Town? has that uh, structure where coaches, when coaches are coming in, they tell you, look, this is our structure. This is our style. You follow it. It's not the other way around we to follow you. 
how many teams has that in this uh, country? Because I believe that is the biggest problem where we have chop. Because also when you come to Sundowns, or if you look at Sundowns, the structure was Piso. Piso put up that structure, I believe, more. Because he was everything. He has every say in Sundowns then. So, but now in 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 the team, in the 16 team, apart from Sundowns, because uh, Ajax is no more there. Who, which team does that? Vina, Vina, yes, sir. I yes, think sir. what you talk about sundowns started with Kappa. You remember Angel Kappa? Yeah, Angel Kappa. Yeah, Angel yeah, Kappa. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the one who started that. Okay, okay. Even okay. through my tenure there with Gordon Ingerson, it was the same. And you okay. remember from two, I was there 2007, when the Monday won the league before. And yeah. Tenor, the generation of players that came out always wanted to do better. And credit okay. must go to Pizzo as well. For eight years, he kept that generation carrying on. And now, Rulani, Manoba, and Steve have still got, to, have got another generation that want to do better than the last generation. And this is the culture. And yes, you are right. I actually have a culture like that. Our problem is that our owners of the lesser teams are not building a culture of their own. Of their own. We are always talking. <laughs> yes. We are not building a culture of our own. We want to be like the Manchester City or the Leicester Cities. We want to be like someone else. We don't want to bring in someone. We know this man has got an African culture in him. Therefore, I, I'm going to employ him, but I want him to be like this for a long way. And that's where the technical director comes in. He's the guy who develops the culture for the club. He's not the guy like we are, we are known today. Ah, technical director. It's a coach in waiting. <laughs> We've created words. We've created... Uh, 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 I'm, I'm... No. If I'm the technical director, I don't want the head coach job. Because when we bring in a new head coach, I have to be part of the people who are going to view this guy and say, listen, my friend, be like this, this. Your history as a coach has been like this, like this. Do you think you can fit into us? Yes or no? Uh, no, two yeah. blacks, blue, I want this, I want that. No, sorry, my friend, go next door. Yes, exactly. So I oh, hope I know. make myself clear, Gamza. Yeah. No, no, yeah. no, don't worry, coach. That is the quote of 2021. Go next door. Go next door, Kelvin. <laughs> speaking, uh, <laughs> Kelvin Sosibo, speaking of that, I mean, you know, we know that Chiefs have a technical director in Keza Jr. Uh, we know they've got a head of youth development um, in the form of a final coach. Uh, how long do those kinds of things take before you start reaping the benefits? I mean, as a Chiefs fan, where must one put their patience? And, and how many years do you think, you know, we're going to see more in Jabula Bloms coming out and, and, and then being effective? Uh, coach says, you know, they're in a, in a strange position, Kaiser Chiefs. They've got the youngsters that have come through. Are they being pushed to their maximum? We don't know as far as development is concerned. Uh, but between what we have now and those that are going to come through, how many years or seasons do you think it's going to be until the good times are back, so to speak? I think in most times, um, what we need to understand is that each and every phase from a team, they could be playing well or they could be playing bad. But remember, there are phases in the team, meaning that a, a club will go through a rebuilding phase. And then from a rebuilding phase, they'll go to a matured stage. And then from a matured stage, then they need to rebuild again. What does that mean? It means that those younger players that are there now are the players that are still on a rebuilding phase up until they get into a maturity stage. But now we need to go back and really look into it deeply that does Chiefs really have enough um, uh, ammunition in terms of getting the younger players to, to, to blend in with the first team players? What is the integration role that is being played at Kaiser Chiefs? Is it enough? Are they producing enough players at the development ranks? That's the question that we are supposed to be posing because those are the same players that will have to carry the team culture going forward. But should we not have that and we're having players that are just going to be fitting that don't understand the culture of the team? Because 
it goes a long way when it goes to the scouting departments, whereby every time when a player is being scouted within the, the league or outside, outside the continent, it means that that player will fit in the style that the team is actually moving towards. So if you're going to have a player that is going to be a surplus coming in and still having to adapt, it's going to take long for us to find joy in, in watching KZ Chiefs still emulating the past generation that has been there because all those players that were there understood exactly what they were supposed to do. That's why these teams that have won these leagues back to back, it was teams that started from the beginning. It was a building phase, then now they got into a mature, uh, maturity stage. The same as what Brighton was saying and coach in a sense that with Mitchell, I do understand what was going on there because Mitchell, when he came back, he came back to a team that has already matured, but they didn't have a plan of rebuilding. This is why now they're finding a collapse. After he left, there was not much of players that had actually left on the Pirates. So therefore, uh, what, other what, what was the next phase for Orlando Pirates to actually to move forward? Do they have enough uh, players to take over from the past players? or to, to emulate what they've done? No. Then this is where now I'm going back to uh, KZ Chiefs now. Should they start again and still give opportunity to those guys like Ubon Jabulo, Plom, uh, you have uh, Abu, Abu, Abu Jabulo and Nobo. These are the same players you, you, see, you need to get them in abundance in order for you to prepare the team to get into a mature, a mature stage. Okay. No, fair enough. Fair enough. And then, I mean, to that point, gentlemen, um, you know, you can just kind of put up your hand yeah, and give me your up. answer. I, yeah, yeah. Thumbs up. Can I, can I add on what um, Soso is saying? Uh, sure. Quick one to add on what. I love how he's saying the, the rebuilding phase and the maturing phase. But I feel like um, I stand to be corrected, So, so I believe that within those phases in the middle, I think we need to add the progression phase. You know, because while we're rebuilding, we need to check the progress as to where to from here. Are we doing the right things? Because most of the times it's like, I'll make an example with, we envy, you will envy your neighbor. But when you look at your neighbor, you don't look at the sense of saying, what, are, what am I doing wrong to get to where he is and how can I fix it? So in terms of progression, I feel like that's what we like in South Africa. It's either we have the rebuilding and the maturity phase, which is, Purpose for me because the gap we need to have the middle ground where we bridge the gap between the younger and the experienced. So what do we call those in the middle? As to say, now we are at a phase where we're rebuilding. We have formed a formidable team which can carry us forward, which is our progression phase. Before we can get to that maturity phase, so I feel like that progression that's what we like the most because right now we envy sundowns. We look at sundowns. We say, what are we doing? This is this the structures and whatnot. But in-house, what are we doing? Because we can allude to so many factors. For instance, with uh, Gavin's instance, he was given a team which was in a rebuilding phase, so to speak. But then was he given enough time, enough resources to do all these kind of things? Therefore, we are surprised now when um, Baxter comes in and we start to see now Chiefs. I feel like with, with Gav, that could have happened had he was given a solid mandate to say, now we need the progression. Where are we going with this team? Uh, and what, what, what's the philosophy and the culture? Because, for instance, with us at Pirates, we had, a, we, had a, we had a philosophy whereby each and every new player, when you came in, would, you'd be separated to the team that won the double treble, to the team that won the treble, and to the team that just won a trophy. And then while you're on the other side, where you just came in, you'd be told that you look at those guys, you need to aim higher. You need to tell yourself that I need to be there. I need to surpass the double travel guys. I need to surpass so and so. By then, that player is well integrated within the team because his expectations are already met. He's already been told that, look, this is the culture of the team. You come into a team of winners. You're coming into a team that has high expectations whereby these guys, like the coaches said, have won one, two, three. What are you going to add to that? That's the pressures that we always had. But now it's like players, we come in, we don't know the phases and the stages where we are in. You know, like what Soso is saying in terms of rebuilding and the maturity level. Some players, they don't know as to what is it when you are at the maturity level. Hence, we, 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 we say, let's pause for a moment. Let's now include the progression phase whereby we check progress. Are we on the right track? Are we doing right things? Is the culture still intact? Is the identity still intact? You know, so yeah, that's, that's, that's what to add on what Soso is saying and it's very spot on. Okay, Obina, I feel like you had something else you wanted to add. Oh, Kelvin, go ahead. Yes. He's not used to yeah. being right. I understand yeah. exactly what 
I think about... uh, if I, and I add, can I add oh. to Calvin? Oh, oh, let's go Calvin with the L. Let's start Calvin with the L, and then we're going to come to you minus the L. Coach, we're going to start with Calvin, and then we're going to come to Kevin. So, Calvin, go for it, and then we'll go to Kevin. I understand you fully, Brighton. What I was trying to highlight here is remember, on the page, you also have an interview. Followed in a sense that when you're getting youngsters from a junior level and then you are you are introducing them into your first team, that's you integrating them and having the progression. Now, when you reach maturity, this is now a team that is going to carry you for that maybe two, three, or four year, uh, four season. And after that, you're going to reach an expiry level. Meaning what? There are players that now are going to be out of contract or that that, that, are, that they're going to feel as if. They are, they are older now, they can no longer contribute to the team. This, this That's now an expiry uh, level. So when you're looking at those three phases, you're looking at a point whereby it's a rebuilding phase in terms of integrating youngsters and also digging down, digging down also into the development and putting players back there was going to help you to sustain the team. And then from a maturity level, this is when now you will know that the, in terms of how when you're going to prioritize in terms of the players that you're going to have, the loading, the volume, then everything that you're going to be planning according to those players. That's why the, also the, 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 the injection of those youngsters become important in your, in, in your team. And then once they're on the, on, on, on the, on the, expiry, on the expiry side, this is when now you're looking at, team, at players like Abu Kune with their age, the Parkers with their age, also who are now are, are, are reaching their final stages of the, the, the campaign. This is what I, I'm, I'm actually trying to sum up when, when, I, when I mentioned those three. Okay, cool. Because Thanks my, for that my, summation. Yeah. <laughs> okay, because some my reasoning is that... Uh, be Brighton, you, 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 you respond. Yes, go ahead, coach. Uh, when, you, when, when, when the guys talk uh, and, I, and I listen and then this is where is that this is where the coaching experience comes in. This is where the expiry and uh, the maturity date come in. This is where we go back and we talk about five subs and three subs. This is where you go back and you talk about training. Uh, because as a coach, I've always had, no matter where I've coached, I've always had seven youngsters always in my training. What's Always. the thing? What's the thinking behind that? Besides coach? the, my thinking behind that is I've always started them off, getting them matured enough and making sure that I only have the players that they are going to compete with that are the best in my team. Mm. For example, mm. I had a Henrico Buertas who was probably at his best when he played for me, but I had a boy in Northwest that was probably just as good as Enrico Buertas, but he was only 15. Mm. And he was competing with Enrico Buertas. And what I would do is during some games, especially friendly games where Enrico would always want to fight, I would take Enrico off and put him on. Or I would keep him and keep Enrico with me. Do you so remember the name the of the coach? I'm had, the player, coach. Can mature at six. Do you remember oh, the name of the player? Football anymore. I'm so disappointed with him. Oh, man. Okay. Uh, his name was Catlejo, Catlejo, Catlejo. Some he scored the goal in the the team from Ivory Coast that put me through to the African chat that put me through to the group stages. Hmm. And he doesn't All play right. football anymore. But I'll find his name for you. Gamza. My 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 thing I'm trying to say there is that that's the bridge in the gap that I want to do. The other bridge in the gap with the five substitutes is that you do that as well in your training and in a live game. And that also breeds competition within the live games for Pirates, for Chiefs now. Because in Gobe, I didn't go back at, at, at Amazulu. I always thought he was a fantastic player. He was always a good player, but he was going to mm. compete with, with, with Koke and he was going to compete with, uh, who was the other player I had? I had another left, a left-footed player. I sent him out so he could play first division football. He ended up playing with Swallows. Great player, mm. very, very good player. So these are the things that, as a coach, you've got to, you've got to know the tricks of the trade because that's all in your back pocket, and and then you you will get it right if they give you the right amount of time as well. For example, you ask technical director, how much does it change? 
Brighton was involved. I think it takes minimum five years for hmm. you to win, 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 unless you have the money. Sundowns hmm. have the money. Hmm. They are buying the players. Hmm. Sundowns have, they have very few players coming from the development, I think. I think it's, at the moment, Kaulice, you don't think it's enough players coming Kaulice, through, coach? Is what, it's not, there's not enough coming through after eight years of consistent winning trophies. Mm. There's not enough coming through. Okay. I think Sundowns could have a lot more coming through after eight years of consistency. Okay. There must be someone. Yeah. They had a boy, they were the left. I think they sent him out for. for, for, for I mean, you've got the likes of Maya you know coming through, coach. I thought he was a fantastic player. Mm. I think this is where also I want to Ooh. add something in on what coach no, is Mayema. saying. Go ahead, Obina. Um, I believe this is where I want to add something in on what coach was saying. I believe uh, Sosibo and and uh, Brighton was also saying the same thing. But where I'm against, and people should look at, I uh, should trade carefully because I know that with with uh, Kevin, he's he's done that. He's He's been with the little ones, you know, he has trained them. But then I'll also put this. You can't not win. You can not go for trophies in with children, with going in with more of your team to be children. Is That is not possible. The biggest problem of African football today is being always the same children play football. The likes of 96 of Bafana that won the, there is no kids there. Go to it and look at it. There is no kids, no way. When Manchester brought in the younger players into their team, they brought gradually in. It's one, two, or one. You know, it, it comes in that way. You don't just pick three, four players and put in a team and expect to, to, to compete. You know, when I look in, when I, when I was going through this academy stuff of West Ham, their belief, and sports in Lisbon, their, their belief is, at the end of the season, if they mm. could develop one player, one mm. that can break into any Premier League team, mm. is an achievement for them. But two is a bonus. Mm. They always focus at the end of every academy season, one should be able to promote into the team. This is where your continuity go in. You don't expect to bring in the likes of Bloom and Ngobo immediately into the team. Two is okay, fine. But more than that, then mm. you, 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 you just play. Because the truth is, when you look at Sundowns, they've been able to maintain the mental strength of going on and seizing and on and on and on, you know, without breaking. It, it, it's not about having kids into the team. It's about having matured players be it they're young or old, but they have mental strength that is very, very strong. Mm. I, if I look at Saunders, I don't see 18 years old there. But doesn't mm. mean that kids doesn't play ball. Kids, kids mm. play ball. When you get kids into the game, you get... There, there, there are exceptional uh, 17, 15 years that mm. comes into the team and, and you look, they have an instant impact. Yeah. In a sense. The mm. problem I'll still put at most of the teams or the, our mentality is that when a player is clocking 30, 31, 32 in Africa, they tell you he's finished. While in Europe, we have a player playing at the age of 38. In a sense, so my, my thing, we should trade with care to say mm. about this thing of development, about this thing of... Sonda, when, 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 when uh, I always go reference with uh, Manchester United, when Manchester brought the class of 96, they, they call it class of 92, Rangigs and and uh, and is it Rangigs and Poscus? They didn't come in the same time. Mm. Rangigs came in a year later of these guys. You know, there were about six players that came in in, in, in three years mm. before the team right. And I remember what Alex Ferguson said after they won the Champions League. When they won the first Champions League under him in 1999, he is a 98-99 season. He said. This time we have to go in to buy now. It's no more of younger because any team that plays us wants to win. Mm. This <laughs> is where we will have the people with mental strength to keep us going. That is huh. when Manchester Thumbs United started so, buying more. So, but if, I, if, me... if, if people always talk about this thing of bringing young, young, rebuilding, building. This building we are building, where are we building the tower to go? To go see Jesus Christ. 
The same thing Coach happening Kevin. in Papana. Yeah. Let me, let me come into in Papana. Papana, every year they want to bring in the young, they want to bring in the young. Where in Nigeria you have matured people, mental strength playing football, you want to bring in young to come and compete against him. <laughs> I believe that we should look at this thing of bringing your. I, I, I'm not against it. Coming yeah, up yeah, with yeah. young players, I've never. Right. I'm, I'm one person I adopt. I, I, I like I adore young players. Up yeah. to today, meeting up, meeting up will be a witness on that. Every year right. I always talk to him about young players. But one thing I always say: teams like Chiefs, Pirates, Sundowns, guys, these are winning teams. Mm. These are teams that want to win. Don't right. expect them to bring in young every year into their team. They might okay. bring in one or two, but leave it yeah. at that point until that one. And we expect them to mature. keep. We expect them. Then we expect them to keep. When Indeed. we're talking about maturity, let's keep the. Let's have the continuity. Let's have the the winning formula then, because now what we were talking about with Soso is that we're talking about rebuilding phase and then the maturity phase. But have which team here in South Africa apart from Sundowns, whereby? first season they say they're rebuilding and the very same season subsequently they change and say we need to win trophies so which is which who is who hence my question was based on the progression phase because each and every season end of the season this team has moved from a building team to a team that was supposed to be competing a team that was supposed to be winning Take, for instance, you made an example about Bafana team. We're saying we're rebuilding with Hugo Plus. No one had any expectations. Now we lose. We didn't qualify. Everyone's like, but we should have qualified. Which is which? Who is who? <laughs> that's, that's, that's my question here to say, if we're saying we're rebuilding, what period? Coach has mentioned five years. Do we give our South African coaches enough time? In particular, I'll face, I'll, I'll just talk and be frank. Did we give Gavin Hunt enough time? at Kaiser Chiefs to say he's rebuilding with the limited resources. Did we give him enough time? No, we didn't give him enough time. Did we give but him Brighton, enough resources I mean, I mean, to say I mean, Brighton, it was said that he had kind of lost the dressing room, though. I mean, I get the, the point that he might have needed more time, but when you don't have the players on board or if there's divisions in the squad, does it, you know, do you, do you still carry on with the brute force? How many of coaches coach are going to come in and bow? How many coaches Gamza. are going to come in and bow? If we say you have lost Fair the enough. dressing room, in what sense did he lose the dressing room? But losing you know, the dressing room, guys. Losing the dressing room. This is this time we're hearing this thing of losing dressing room. Guys, it's because the management are not supporting and the management are interfering. That is exactly. where the coach is losing exactly. the dressing That's room. That's why we need to be because honest. Under Let's Alex be honest. Ferguson, under under Alex Ferguson, he upon the way he was, he was arrogant to players sometimes when he needs to be the hairdryer, um, whatever the, he had, or anything. But Alex Ferguson once said, "There is only one management in Manchester United. Mm. It's me and nobody else." He said that in his book. So now, when you have that thing of losing the trail, what what normally happens is that when a coach starts putting being strong and like being firm to the players and some of this management are, 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 are having side talks with the players. They start <laughs> uh, because how can a coach work when he cannot order things to these players? Then the next thing they come up, he has lost the dressing room. It happens okay. also in Europe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I hear you, Obina. Fair point, fair point. Coach, uh, you've been chomping at the bit to uh, make your contribution. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, I, I, I've been chomping at the bit uh, to, to, to ask Obina, was he a kid once in his life? <laughs> Yes, I was. He was a kid once in his life. He uh-huh. talks like he was an adult all his life. And no, I, no. I, 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 coach, I, coach, I, coach, I, coach, I'd like coach, to ask coach, him. Coach, let no, me put no, point. no, let me no. Put I, point understand, I understand. Oh, hold a second. I understand where you're coming from. Okay. And I know exactly what you're saying. But I do believe you've got to be an astute coach in order to bring in youngsters. Uh, what, what was Hodi Sang Cabo Melo's age when he played the first time in the PSL? He knows everything about Europe football, uh, Obina. What was Hodi Sang's age when he played his first game in no, the coach, PSL? No, think, coach, I think you he misunderstood. In, he plays in Portugal now. If you ask me that question, coach, then it means you misunderstood me. My point is you want to win the league. You want to compete. You have a team that is competing like Chiefs, Sundowns, and... Hello, coach, are you there? And Pirates, yeah. Coach? Uh, you'll hear it. It's going to be on YouTube, Obina. Don't worry. I'm, I'm sure you'll <laughs> no, watch it back. I, I think I'm just trying to bring 
uh, my point back to the coach is mm. I've, 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 I'm somebody that adore young players if there is one good one that can mm. give us something mental. Mostly is the mental strength. Right. It's not about the quality. Yeah. For me, yeah, talent yeah, yeah. quality is is nothing to me when the mental strength to go on and on and on is not there. So what I'm saying I'm is back. that. Uh, yeah, coach, please, I said, let me just put in I'm this. Back. I said, coach, <laughs> maybe you misunderstood me. I'm saying bringing in your players is not the problem. But the issue is no. how many younger players do you bring in in order for this team that has been winning back to back yes. competing to continue? No, to continue. Yeah. I understand that. I understand that. That's a uh, good point, Obina. Obina, I understand that. I, Obina, you make, you make a lot of sense. But I just want to bring you back to Africa. Forget about Alex Ferguson. He, he doesn't work. He doesn't work anymore. Uh, I want to bring you yeah. back to Africa. Because Cabo Melo Horisang was 15 and a half when he played in the PSL. Gift Links was 16 when he played 30 games in the PSL. Mabizela, Sibu Sisu Mabizela was 19 when he played 32 games in the PSL. Understand what I'm saying? I'm saying look at where we are now. Mm. So you, you, you're saying we've, we, we've regressed, coach. You're saying you, we've gone backwards, yeah. is what you're saying. Yeah. I am saying is we have to do what Sundowns is doing is fine for the betterment of the game. We need someone to compete. And I can agree with Obina. We've got to get our best players in Kaiser Chiefs, our best players that Brighton says that he was with at the London Pirates to for those people and the other ones that are pushing your balance your TS galaxies your Cape Town cities your super sports we are pushing they are pushing they have got to prepare a better 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 competition for mm. these four or five giants that we mm. have that need to go into Africa and do what a Simba does what a younger does what uh, 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 Casablanca does we've got to get those stars because then we will be known as the best in the world. Right now, we're just competing against each other. Okay, yeah, and fair let's, enough. Let's, yeah, it makes sense when I say that. Yeah, you're true, coach. And let's let's give everyone a fair chance because you find now there's a young star breaking in. We're saying he's still young. He lacks experience. Up until he gets to a phase where by now, this player was supposed to be peaking in his age. You get to, he gets to his 29s, his 28s. Take home this, say, God is great, late, 28 and so forth. And that player, once they get to that age, now we are being robbed of all the seasons that he could have blessed us with. Now this player gets to 29, 30, 31, we're like, now he's tired, now he's old. So from him lacking the experience to now being tired, now being old, I think that's the, 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 the gap that we need to bridge here because the younger, where is he going to get the experience if we're saying he lacks the experience? By playing. Let's throw them in while they're still young. If he drowns, we try to save him but we already know that, okay, we've polished something for the future. Because right now what we're doing, we say the player is young. We throw them in, they drown. We pull them out, be like, yeah, they lack experience. We're not going to win. Hence, I'm saying, let's identify. We identify as two. We're rebuilding. We get to the progression phase. We get to the maturity phase. But all in between the, those stages, what are we doing? What do we want to achieve? You know, we cannot do things fly by night. You're envying what Sundance is doing. You're envying what your neighbor is doing, but you don't know the measures of what the neighbor has done to get to that phase, to build that wall or being. If we say exactly. we're building a tower, what are Made money from oil and, that, and, 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 and exactly. diamonds and mining. If you're building that tower, <laughs> what did you put in? What did my neighbor put in to build that tower? As opposed to me envying that he built a tower, it's nice, it's successful, but I don't know what he put in. And the implementation. After that implementation, we need to trust the process. Of which that's what we're failing to do here in South Africa. We don't trust the process. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get uh, Coach uh, Calvin Johnson and say, Coach Kevin, come with uh, with Coach Calvin Sosiva as your assistant, guys. I believe in your philosophy. I believe that you guys are coming with something good. You're gonna work on something good. You're gonna produce young stars, Sosiva. Coach Kevin, with the expertise, you're gonna come with this. And then somewhere along the line, all of a sudden, all those things they fall. Now and I'm like, I don't believe in that nonsense anymore. You guys need to bring me trophies. What are we doing? We're not trusting the process. We're not building. There's no foundation. So let's let's work on those things first. Let's establish what we want to do. And from there, if the mandate is to say we're building for so and so, because we've been saying 2022, we thought it was not going to arrive. We said it long time ago, 2022. 
it's 2022 in a couple of weeks. Are we in the World Cup? No. Do we have a formidable team, national team, that we're saying we can wake them up at any given time to go fight for us and win trophies? No. Because of the planning and lack of implementation and trusting the process of that. That's all I can say. Okay, okay. I mean, uh, you wouldn't have those problems, Brighton, if you uh, had uh, Obina as your technical director. And, oh, well, exactly. Uh, I think, I think, Kamsa, you said it. You just, you just said something. I want to, I want to tell Brighton. You to say for South African football to, uh, or African football to, 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 to take a good direction. First of all, the people that are, uh, uh, they have to put the right people on the job. Just. If you look at the position, hello, are we there? Yeah, you are there. Well, yeah, we're still here, brother. Okay, sorry. When you look, when you look at positions, they put people there based on who know who or who. If, if I'll tell you, a team like Keza Chief to hire um, Keza Junior as the technical director, give me his CV as the technical director. What he has done. Oh, well, Obina, Obina, like, oh, there was a clarification team. with that. Apparently, he's the sporting director. Which Not is the different to a technical okay. director. Yes, he's the exactly, sporting but director. That is what I'm talking. If you want a technical director, you need to get somebody that have done it, like a team like Kesa Chief, needs somebody that have done it somewhere with good CV to come there and do it, to direct the team on the path that we, we know. But not anybody, you, you know, they just create posts like, I'll tell you the truth, my team back home. Obina coming back as the coach, all of a sudden they check, no, Obina, we want you as the technical consultant. All of a sudden I'm a coach, I'm working as a technical consultant. What am I consulting or who is consulting me? And they just put me in there as the assistant coach. You know, a Premier League team like that, no. You know, you need to get the right people in the right job, in the right space. Then I think all this thing we're talking about will go. We have people like, let's say, coach like Kevin Johnson is sitting here with me having this there where a team like Baroka has a coach that has no qualification sitting on the bench just because he's the in-law or the brother of the coach. So how do the football of South Africa move ahead? How do So we sit here, we talk about anything, we talk about these players coming up. Who are the people coaching this player coming up that the next mm. time I, I, I myself will start coaching them? You start, there was a time I was talking to, to Ernst. Ernst told me, his job here is to, to direct tactics, you know, direct, not to coach technique. All of a sudden, mm. he's teaching players technique. Hi, no ways. That's crazy. Gents, we're almost out of time. Um, it's the halfway, well, two thirds of the season have been played by, by some teams. I just want to get your dark horse for the second half of the season. We've already seen how Royal AM have literally picked up where Bloemfontein Celtic have left off. We've seen the likes of Skukune United also throwing their names into the mix as being that dark horse coming up from the first division into the Premier League and doing well. You've got Stellenbosch who have found some consistency this season with Coach Steve. Super Sports United, Amazulu still in the mix. So your dark horses, starting with you, Kelvin Sosibo, uh, as we wrap up the show for 2021. We've <coughs> um, uh, introduced a lot of youngsters. They've been getting positive results. The coach has managed to keep the squad in harmony, has made sure that they're getting results. The reason why they're sitting at the top uh, is because of the hard work that we invested in these youngsters. Again, we're looking at a coach that came in there with the, with the I normally call them the three C's. It's one coach that, that came in there with a concept uh, who is competent and also doesn't have that much in terms of finance or capital. We also introduce a style of play uh, that helps the team to be where they are. So for me, I think I've, I've watched most of their game and the youngsters that have been thrown into the deep end have really... Uh, passed the test within flying colors. So for me, they are the dark horses. Uh, just not too sure in terms of uh, are they going to be adding a little bit more of their players in terms of the back line for maturity's sake. I know there's Robin Johannes that is there. But uh, for me, I think they need to go to the markets just to balance those uh, other departments, which is the back line and also in the middle. Up front, they are fine. They're doing well. So I think for me, they, they, are, the, they are the team that I've been watching closely in terms of how they got their results. Okay, cool. Brighton, your dark horse for the second half of the season. Who do you think will be at the surprise package in and amongst the top four or five? 
It should be my former current. I don't know. Do, do I call it former <laughs> current? Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, no. Yeah. Current headache and current be, team. Yes. Yeah, headache, Marumo Gallants. Uh, it should be that one. For me, the re- reason being that um, it's a huge leap from them, for them from the relegation zone and how the team was in mayhem, in chaos with Sebastian Minya and all of that, you know, clarification as to who's the coach in Poma League and so forth. And then when Coach Dan came in, I mean, because it has a great uh, uh, playing personnel, the players are exceptionally good. I mean, need not forget that that's the team that won NetBank Cup with uh, TTM when we were there, you know. So the team was solid. I mean, it was tipped for a top eight finish uh, mm. coming into the season because it finished strong as TTM. Then obviously a whole lot of things transpired within the team structures. And then credit must go to the management, obviously, for realizing that um, they need there needs to be change in terms of coaching personnel and the players as well. Credit must go to them for adapting very quickly into Coach Dan's philosophy because he is a great coach, one of the best coaches in South Africa. I mean, given the confidence, given the, the platform as well to, to exercise his expertise, he does perform very well. So watching their game, starting from the TP Mazembe game when he was in charge, my word, they were amazing. Uh, good fluidity, good possession play, ball retention, the structure of the team and so forth. Everything has been amazing, you know. So I think they're going to be the dark horse. They're the best is yet to come from them. I watched their game against Mamelodi Sundowns, which they were very competitive. And they, they, they created more chances to win the game. So I think they, they will sneak up a surprise in terms of probably... A top eight finish. I'm, 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 I'm rooting for them. My okay. slash former or current. <laughs> TBD. Uh, Obino, Kofo, yeah. your, your thoughts? Um, uh, I know you'd like to say Maritzburg United, but um, who do you think is going to be the top <laughs> come the second half of the season, brother? Unmute the mic. Oh, oh can't hear you, Obina. Unmute the mic, brother. Can you hear me now? Loud and clear. Like I said, I would have gone for Marisberg United. Uh, but I think uh, because it's a team, I always go to the training. I always watch, you know. But somehow, I, I think I just have to go with TS Galaxy. You know, looking at what the coach, the, the, the little time um, he has been there, you know, his um, style of play. You know, the way he structured his team uh, in the field, the way they keep us. I, I just believe uh, maybe it's taking time, uh, which um, sometimes in the PSL you don't have much time. But if really the players will come out, you know, with full force to understand his philosophy, already looking at where they, how they play, how they keep the ball, you know, I, I believe... Um, if they could get one or two uh, with two quality players coming into that team this uh, second round, I believe the coach will achieve, um, you know, he will surprise uh, many people. You know, I, I said I would have gone for Marisberg, but then I'm just looking at the financial muscle of Marisberg, and that is why I'm just not going that way. But I'm looking at Tears Galaxy, which I know team, and he's he's very good on rapping players, you know, talking sweet talking players. You know, he could get players um surprisingly that we don't expect into the team. So I, I'm looking at Tears Galaxy to be the dark horse of uh, the next round. Okay. Looking forward to that one. And coach Kevin, your thoughts sir on uh, the dark horse uh in and amongst uh, the the more fancied teams in the DSTV Premiership? Yeah, Gamza, uh, for me, I have to tell Obina, I've got a good team. Marisberg are very, very good players. He just has to get it right. Uh, if we have to be consistent in our conversations that we have to go, then uh, I think Brighton must change his mind. Uh, I will go with Calvin. Because Calvin is consistent with his thoughts. It is uh, Stellenbosch United. Stellenbosch, I think uh, when we talk about the building a team, building mm-hmm. phase, then Steve Barker has done very well as far as those things are concerned, as far as bringing younger players in with a very little, little, little budget. But being consistent and building, building. And when I look three, four years back since he's been there, there's been a build. So I, I, I put him down as a dark horse because he has come of age now. The team has come of age. 
and he has to carry on doing what he does best. So for me, oh. I think Calvin is he's, he's on the right track. There we go. <laughs> there we go. So he yeah. also said, he said, he said, he said, he said, uh, 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 I didn't hear him. I just know he said, spoke about Robin Johannes. That's what all I heard. But he did say, uh, yes, he did. did he he said he was, he said, uh, Robin might just need some help in defense there. So they maybe might need to go into the market, is what Calvin was saying. Yeah, but I think he's got one or two players in the background. Uh, Stevie Barker, he's got he's got someone there. But he's been consistent and he's been building, which I like because we talk like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Brighton talks, he should change his mind, Brighton. I know. <laughs> I'm just pulling his leg. <laughs> oh, on that note, coach, thank you so much. And gentlemen, thank you as well. Brighton and Trongo, Calvin Sosibo, Obina Okafor, and joined by Kevin Johnson. My name is Kamumbata. I hope you really enjoyed hanging out with us on this Monday. Uh, I think it's the last one of the year. Yeah, there we go. The last one for 2021. Hope it's been worthwhile for you. We'll be back after AFCON, okay? So please join us then. The guys are going to go on a well-deserved break. Calvin Sosibo is... Uh, elbows are, are hurting from the chair that he's sitting in hey kelvin uh but they're going to be fine must be i guess so we're looking forward to that i hope to catch up with everybody that's on this panel in the new year and we hope to catch up with you too thank you so much for the support throughout 2021 we're going to improve things shake things up a bit and make sure that we come back stronger in 2022 but remember to subscribe hit the notification icon and please uh, stay in touch with us as we'll do our best to stay in touch with you feeding you all the stuff that comes out in the new year so we'll catch up after afcon enjoy the tournament Uh, enjoy that other cup uh what's that other cup that's happening uh fidel the dstv cup that one huh yeah, yes. look forward to that Compact. one too and hope, and hope that your favorite player doesn't get crocked. Okay, cool, guys. We'll catch you in 2022. <laughs> Thank you so much to my panel. We love you. We'll see you later.